Showed right here, we battled to the very end. A message for the fans. Thank you guys for coming out for the touchdown. Yeah! Big Larry Dean Brackett brought the most brought the most nervous man of the game tonight. Big win. Ryan McCain. Ryan McCain, you went 99 yards. You put the team on your back. What was your thoughts when you took the ball over on downs? You had to go 99 yards for the win. I mean, it was late in the fourth quarter, and someone had to do something, so I stepped up made it happen. Ryan, you play grown man football tonight. What's it like to know that you have a chance to play for a state championship? Uh, it's amazing. It'd be great to go out senior year with a state championship. Ryan, you got a, Ryan, you got a home game next Friday night. You want to send a message out to all the fans to be there at Silvertown Field? Yes, be there. Be there. Ryan, great game. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. I promise you I would have walked off this field tonight and told you, like I've been telling you for several weeks, how proud I am of this football team. So, bottom line. Now, to paraphrase what we just said here, my man Brackett here, said it was the most stress he's ever had in a ball game. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That last drive was probably the least stressful drive that I've ever called. That was easy. That was freaking easy. Give it to your line. Oh, yeah. That's all the line. That was easy. Yeah. That was the easiest play calls that a man can make. 
I would have probably had six coaches and 200 fans rip my head off over there if I'd have called something set 14 and 26. Huh? Amen. Yo, Joe's even calling 26. And, it's stubborn, and, and as selfish as Xander is, Xander's even say giving it to Ryan. Hey. Guys, I just had this newspaper guy from Chattanooga Times just asked me if number four's got anything left in him, any more carries left in him. I just told him this whole football team's got at least two more games. We got two there. games. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we got a, we got a test. Uh, uh, Tyner, somebody said Tyner. Chattanooga Tyner. Got great athletes. We got great athletes. We got great athletes. Got great athletes. Got great athletes. Got great athletes. I think it's back at home, guys. I told Tracy Treadway, uh, Trey's dad, one day last week, you know, after we after we played Hampton, he was uh, he didn't know if he was going to be able to make it back home. He didn't know if we could make it back home. Not anything on him. Uh -oh. To take them senior posters in, I asked him, just keep them up until we finish. Okay? <laughs> We're not finished yet. Guys. We're not finished. Hey, all the, all the people that came to Sports Night, we appreciate it. Hey, show that gun, man. Something to say about that defense back. What? Coach Allen. Coach Allen. Oh, Coach Allen. Hey, what we say? Yeah! 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 To be honest with you, Jace, I wasn't. I, I told the kids there that was the bracket. Say that that was the most stressful drive or whatever towards the end of the game that he's ever sat through. And I just, I just told him that. And I'm, I'm being honest when I say this. I was not stressed at all. I mean, it was, it was either going to happen or it wasn't going to happen. And with the confidence that that offensive line had, and what the confidence that Ryan McCain had, and Joe and Xander blocking, and uh, Caleb Bowen doing the blocking. Up front, I mean that was easy, man. I had two play calls in my arsenal right there, you know. So I didn't feel like I could go could go wrong with either one. And you know, I'm telling you, I, I told these guys to just relax. And I, I've I've never been so relaxed in my life, to be honest with you. Coach, you talking about Ryan McCain and all the backs. All I mean, it was it was a real team effort tonight. Was there any doubt in your mind to go to Ryan McCain when he had to go 99 yards? No, oh, we uh, we. I had him earlier there, you know, in the third quarter, towards the end of the third quarter, and I had a play call for him, and uh, uh, Joe, and, and I don't care that they went back in the game, but I, I had it for Ryan, and uh, Ryan came over and said, Coach, you should have given me the ball. I said, Ryan, I, I had it to you, and it just didn't work out that way. But anyways, you know, when, when a kid's calling for football, you know, just like down Sweetwater several, several weeks ago, you know, it's 20 to 18, we're going for two to tie it up, and Ryan says, Coach, give me the ball. Now, it was, a, it was a terrible play call on my part, but uh, I gave Ryan the ball. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm going to do. You know, when these kids, when they have confidence in what they're doing, uh, I'm, not, I'm not smart enough to figure all this stuff out. You know, the only thing I can do is go on what they tell me. And, and tonight they told me to run the dang football. And, you know, had a real quick pass right there. We wasn't throwing the ball very well in, you know, in the passing game. Uh, Rock hit, football, hit, baby! <laughs> hit, uh, <laughs> He had uh, Trey Treadway on a quick slant. You know, he was able to keep the chains moving. And, uh, you know, just little stuff like that has been big for us. Coach, speaking about Trey Treadway, we joked earlier, you know, he, he, he went on BBB Wednesday, said he was good from 45. Probably that, I no doubt, that's the biggest field goal he's kicked in his life. Uh, and that really helped because Meigs County went for two and scored. That really was one of the big keys to the ball game. Oh, it was huge. And, uh, you know, the thing about it is I told him walking off. That was right there the last play of the half and walked off. I gave him five. And, I told him, I said, if it was from 35, we wouldn't, we'd went for it. You know, but since it was 34, uh, you know, I, I thought we'd roll the dice and see what happened right there. He kicked it pretty well in the in pregame. I don't think it was from 45, but you know, he was kicking from that distance pretty good. So I was going to give him a chance. Well, coach, we're back at home next Friday night. We're going to have to, you know, brush off the mowers, get them tuned up, get the paint, get all that back out. Is there a message you want to send to the fans? We need to feel Civitan feel. Yeah, just uh, just keep coming, keep supporting this bunch. You know, they've worked hard, and uh, you know, they deserve everything that they're getting right now. And, uh, you know, just come out and support these kids. And, you know, we had a great fall in here tonight. You know, it wasn't that far of a drive. And, you know, they did a great job. And, and our kids fed off of it. We need to feed, up, feed off of it next week at home. Just by far the best travel to game of the season, I believe. We had a packed house. Uh, congratulations on a great win. Good luck next week. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, Jason. Jason, I'm here with uh, 
coach Jeff Allen. We don't see a lot of Coach Allen because he's he kind of camera shy. I don't want to talk a lot to us. Uh, coach, defense stepped up big tonight. You know, in, in the previous weeks, third and long has kind of been the, the kryptonite. We did very well on that tonight. Uh, how does that test your defense? You know, it is. Third and long's killed us a long time. Uh, me and Coach Newby's always said if we got third and 12, we just didn't have third and one. But we find a way to mess up third and 12. Um, <laughs> You know, we've we done a little bit of blitzing off the side, which we wasn't used to. Uh, Gann did a great job coming off the corner there at the end. We had a freshman out there playing. Uh, we made a couple adjustments, and it worked out. Coach, uh, Swafford gets hurt right as the half is ending. How did you make that second-half adjustment where he really could just turn around and hand the ball off? Yeah, we knew their offense were really cut in half in that, and we started cheating over a little bit. But, you know, one thing that they did, too, they started changing. They uh, took one of their linemen and made a tight end out of it. We started slanting that way, and uh, our guys bought into it at halftime. Hey, you know, we're not going to get smashed in the mouth. We're going to smash people in the mouth. And, they, you know, they bought into it, and that's what we've done all year. And, uh, you know, it's just a great bunch. We talk about buying in. This is uh, easily a game that, you know, Rockwood could have just been happy to be at, happy to compete in. Okay, well, if we could beat by a touchdown, we played with them. How did you get that mindset out of your defense, out of the offense, and say, hey, guys, we can, we can win this ball game? Our guys never doubted it. We never doubted it. You know, at practice all week, all our linemen said was, Coach, we played with them. Mm -hmm. We played with them. We had three onside kicks that ran that last one. You know, yesterday at practice, they're out there. They're having a great time. Coach Webb said, I've never seen a crew like this. I said, Coach, I got confidence. You know, they think they can win. They know they can win. So, you know, the mindset all week, they, they knew they could. All right, Coach, well, congratulations on a big win. you got about three more hours to soak it up and enjoy it. Take Saturday and enjoy it, and uh, good luck next week. Hey, I appreciate y'all. Thank you. <laughs> Live from BetaCon, he made the trip back to support the Tigers, a staple in the Rockwood Athletic Program. Justin Gambrell. Justin, cut a promo out there to the fans. Get them to Civitan. There's, there's no promo, Tyler. I don't want to give anybody bulletin board material. Give me two huh. claps and a replay. <laughs> Woo! We're here with the Rockwood Sports Network with John Metcalf, Tristan Tinker, Trey Falls. Rockwood football! Trey Treadway, Joe Ashburn, and Caleb Bowen. We just beat the number one team in the state, 9-8, to eight, off our kicker's field goal. Yeah! But it wasn't from 45. We're number one. Number one. Number one. one. Joe Ashburn, how do you feel about this win right here? Man, this is the greatest win I've ever experienced in my life. Yeah. Not like it, baby. Read the chance. Oh, oh we, we're taking it all the way. We're taking it all the way. They're going to have to come down here, face us, because we're taking it our crib. We're going to whip their ass at our crib. <laughs> hey, that is what we're doing. That's Rockwood football right there, baby. Rockwood football. <laughs> I feel like we're going to go to state, and I'm pretty damn hungry. We just beat the number one team in the state, and I kind of want a pizza. All right, Please. pizza's pretty good right now. That sounds great. John Metcalf, the stud on the D line. How do you interception. feel? Interception. I got my interception. That's interception. all I care. Interception. You're catching up to hey, me now, buddy. How, how do you feel? Hey, I feel good. I feel great. We gave them hell. Hey, football, student baby. section right here. Rockwood football, baby. We going to state. Yeah, state. Nate all Brackett. Right. Nate hey, Brackett. Week. Come here, buddy. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> Hey. Give him up, baby! Yeah! Nate Brackett! Nate Brackett throws a terrible pass and about put Joe in the hospital. How do you feel after that? I feel very bad for Joe. I about ended his life. You did, indeed, you did. But we're closing out the Rockwood Sports Network and we're going all the way to Cookville and winning it all, baby. Let's go! Woo! With the final score of 9 to 8, your Rockwood Tigers travel to Meigs County and upset the number one team in the state, the undefeated. Mex County Tigers. The Rockwood Tigers travel 99 yards as they took over possession on their own one yard line to score the go-ahead touchdown and advance to the fourth round, the semifinals of the TWSAA State Football Playoffs. We'll see you next week at Civitan Field, folks. I'm Chase Clem. This is the Rockwood Sports Network.